An ADC analog to digital converter has a voltage range that it's working with for the input. Usually this is going to be zero volts and the supply voltage, ground and VCC, but some of them also take a separate reference voltage and that's the high voltage separate from the supply. So the input is going to be your analog voltage and the output is going to be a binary number. Zero is going to represent that and whatever is going to represent this. So if it has a 10-bit resolution, it puts out 10 bits, then 1023 is going to be the high end. What happens is it divides it up into that many slices and this slice is zero, this slice is one, this slice is 1023. So it's not exactly a voltage, it just says it's in this window. So you want to set the high input voltage range, the reference voltage, to be the highest your signal will ever be because you want the slices to be as small as possible. If your signal only ever gets here, then all of this is wasted and the slices are bigger than they need to be and you're getting a less accurate reading. So that's why you would want to mess with the reference voltage in the first place. Now the Arduino Uno, as an example, has the AREF pin. I went over this in detail in my video on the input and output pins of an Arduino Uno, but very briefly, you have in the Arduino software, you can issue a function call to set what the reference voltage is. The default is the supply voltage. It just uses the five volts of the Arduino. There's also a reference voltage, something like 1.1 volts, that's supplied by the microcontroller. So you can use that. But you can also just supply a voltage on this pin. And the voltage still has to be within the supply. It can't be higher or lower but it can be any voltage in the supply. As a reminder, and go watch the video on the input and output pins, but if you're switching between, you have to be careful because if you have a voltage connected to this and you're not using this pin, whenever you do an analog read, you're gonna short out and fry your chip. If you wanna use the AREF pin, you have to set it to external, do the function call to say use the AREF pin, and then read. Don't ever read before you do that. As long as you set it to external before you read, that's fine. But the trick to the Arduino Uno, and possibly other ADCs, but in this case, this one, there is an input impedance on this pin. The impedance does not apply when you're using the internal or supply voltages, the microcontroller or supply voltages, which is why you short it out. But if it's set on external, then it has this impedance and it's designed with it in mind, it's fine. I think it's about 32 kilo ohms, something like that. Now, if you just supply a voltage, if you have a battery, a Zen or whatever, and you're just supplying a straight voltage, low impedance, don't worry about it, then you put in the AREF pen and you're done. You don't have to think about it. But you do have to think about it if whatever you're putting in here has impedance. For example, a voltage divider. There's no reason that you cannot just use a voltage divider on the Arduino supply itself to supply a reference voltage to this. I know, buy a reference chip, blah, blah, blah. Moving on, you can do this just fine. But there's a couple issues with this. First of all, the AREF pin does require current. Every time you read, it draws current, and when you're not reading, it's just blocked. So what you have is a variable impedance load, and that's terrible if you have any sort of impedance on the supply because it's gonna make it fluctuate. Every time it draws current, that current is gonna to have to go through this impedance and it's gonna give you wiggle in your voltage. So one solution to that is a parallel capacitor. If you throw one of those on, then the capacitor is going to do most of the supplying and this just has to be strong enough to recharge the capacitor in between reads. It's still not perfect if the capacitor doesn't charge fast enough, but if your capacitor charges fast enough and everything is, is hunky-dory, then there's a good solution there. But the bigger issue is you have a voltage divider with the input impedance because the input impedance and the bottom resistor are in parallel. So that actually changes the voltage division. So you have to have your voltage divider skewed way one way. And the bigger, the worse it is. The bigger this voltage divider is, the more you have to have it skewed. Because if this is 32 K ohms and this is 500 K ohms, like let's say you want 2.5 volts and a 5 volt supply, so you do 500 K ohms and 500 K ohms. So you get 32 K ohms here, 500 K ohms here, and the voltage the AREF pin is actually seeing is teeny tiny. So you actually have to have almost all of your resistance here, just a little bit there, and the voltage divider is way off to one side, which might be fine. If that's fine, it's fine. But it's a bit of an issue. The issue can be reduced 
by using smaller resistors. But then you're dumping power because a voltage divider always dumps power, so you want big resistors, especially if the Arduino is feeding it not a wall plug, because the Arduino can only supply so much power. So you want to use big resistors, but then you're going to have this problem, which, like I said, could be mitigated somewhat by the capacitor, but I think it's a lot easier just to buffer. You can buffer it however you want, and like I said, obviously you can just use a real reference chip. Like if you're making a real device, you would use a real reference voltage chip, but a simple unity gain op amp, non-inverting, throw the voltage divider in there and you're good. Because the input impedance of the op amp is so immense, giga ohms, tera ohms, something like that. It's a CMOS input, or not even a CMOS input, but it's super high impedance. So it, you know, doesn't even touch this. So the voltage divider is not, you know, it is, but it's ineffectively voltage dividing with this impedance. So it's basically just straight in. And then it's a low impedance output and it doesn't draw much current. The op amp will be guaranteed to supply it. I looked on the internet and it's something like a 14, pi somebody said, a 14 picofarad capacitor. So it ends up being like 14 nano amps it needs to resupply between reads. So it doesn't need much, but it needs it right then. It's blocked off, blocked off, and then when it reads, when you read the analog pin, it all of a sudden draws and then closes it off again. So you need, you don't need much power, but you need burst power. So you can do this, but actually you still want to do this. You don't have to, but I discovered that there is a lot of wiggle because of the op amp skew. Now, if you get a better op amp, you probably don't need to do this, but my op amp is extremely cheap. So there is a bit of a delay in it responding to this variable impedance load, this variable load. So the capacitor helped. And it's already a cheap op amp, so it's not like the capacitor added much cost. So the op amp allows you to have whatever voltage divider you want, as big a resistors as you want, and they don't have to supply current. It doesn't matter over here. The op amp itself is not going to draw much power. You can size these resistors huge so they don't draw much power. And the op amp and capacitor are only going to put out as much power as needed by this pin because when this pin is not drawing power the capacitor will charge and then stop and the op amp won't be putting out anything so the minuscule idle of the op amp the minuscule idle of a giant resistor voltage divider and you have a low power solution that's also easy so let me show you so here i have an arduino uno plugged into my laptop it's configured the reference voltage to be from the ARF pin and all it's doing is reading a signal pin an analog pin over and over and over and dumping it the serial, which I have magnified on my screen. The Uno has a 10-bit resolution, so 0 is the low end, in this case 0 volts, and 1023 is the high end, in this case the AREF pin. So 512 is halfway between. I've got the left power supply putting out 3 volts directly to the AREF pin, and I've got 1.5 volts directly to the signal pin. So you can see it's nice and stable. Every once in a while it becomes 511 or 513, but there's not a lot of wiggle. So this gives you a baseline of how stable the ADC is, you know, plus or minus one basically in this voltage window. So now I'm going to use a one mega ohm potentiometer as a voltage divider. So here I'm supplying it with Arduino power and I'm going to use my multimeter to adjust this until it reads three volts. Now that's obviously going to be somewhat incorrect because it's a one mega ohm potentiometer and the multimeter is one mega ohm impedance. So, you know, it's impactful, but still, that's set at three volts according to that. But if I change the Arduino reference to use that voltage divider, it's reading 1023, which means the signal is far in excess of the reference voltage it's seeing. So I'm going to try and adjust the voltage divider. So I've adjusted the voltage divider as well as I can with a screwdriver to be giving roughly the correct voltage. And it's reasonably stable. It's about as stable it looks like. But if I read that voltage with the one mega ohm impedance of my multimeter, 4.82. In other words, I have almost set my potentiometer slammed all the way to one side just to get the impedance going into the pin small enough that it sees any voltage at all. Now what happens if I put that capacitor in? And not much happened. You can see the, the numbers keep changing because it's, it's a crappy potentiometer, so it's drifting a little bit just as I breathe on it. But it's about as stable as it was. So the capacitor here is not terribly needed because again, it's only, you know, hundreds of thousands of ohms and it needs nano amps. So 
if you were using, you know, 10 mega ohms, maybe you'd want to consider the capacitor, but it's really not that big of an issue. And you wouldn't want to use resistors that big because then you start getting into the point where electromagnetic discharge and stuff can start being a meaningful source of noise. The problem here is not supplying enough current. The problem is the fact that this divider is slammed all the way to one side. It's crazy. So let's buffer it instead. So now I've got it going through the op amp. So I'll adjust the numbers to be correct. So as you can see, it's oscillating around a range of like 500 to 540. And my potentiometer is about where it should be. It's just off to one side of a half, you know, maybe two thirds, three fifths, somewhere in there, which makes sense because we're trying to get three volts out of a five volt supply. Not that supply, the Arduino, I can turn this off. I'm not using that supply anymore, but we are getting a crazy amount of noise because like I said, this is not an expensive high quality op amp. If you use a better one, you'll do better. So let me just toss that capacitor on again. And there you go, you can see that it's not wiggling like crazy anymore. So now that I can see the number better, let me adjust the divider. And there we go, close enough with this crappy trim pot. You can see I've got it adjusted right where it should be. Mine, you know, it's off by one, but it's only wiggling between two and three. So we have our accuracy. We have our potentiometer in a reasonable spot. Everything's hunky-dory, one op amp and one capacitor. Now here's a fun thing. Let me go ahead and touch this pot. Do you see the wiggle now? All I have is the screwdriver touching one of the pins of the potentiometer. I'm not making a circuit, but it's touching one of the pins and I'm touching it because I'm a capacitor to earth ground right now. I can touch this pin over here. See, it's doing it, but it's not the screwdriver. If I put the screwdriver so it's touching and then let go, the screwdriver is touching that pin, but this is not wiggling. But if I touch the screwdriver, it starts wiggling. So. I'm actually messing up the capacitance of the whole thing. Isn't that funny? Anyway, that's immaterial because you're not going to touch it in a real device. In a real device, you'll get a nice result like this. So the right decision, of course, is use the right part for the right job. Get yourself a voltage reference chip, or at least use something like a Zener diode. But I'm a hobbyist. I'm trying to have as few chips as possible. I'm trying to have a small number of boxes of chips with a large number of chips in each box. And it's not always going to be the optimal solution but it's going to be a solution because I'm a hobbyist, I breadboard all the time, I make something, I take it apart, I'm not trying to make something commercial. So for me, I use up amps all the time, I use capacitors all the time, I use resistors and potentiometers all the time. So I don't need a voltage reference, I can just make one with a voltage divider and buffer it, and then put a cap on it for stability. Easy. That's the way I like to do things. So while I do me and you do you, I'll be seeing you.